Welcome to making the Stuart model steam plant. This one is part 37. Removing the loosely fitted boiler fittings in order to polish the boiler barrel of this new Stuart model 504 boiler that will be used in the steam plant. All of the boiler fittings are loosely fitted so they're very easy to remove starting with the steam turret. This is secured to the steam tap with just one union nut which may not seem to be very strong, but do bear in mind that the steam turret will also be connected to two steam engines as well. So I'm sure it will fulfil the job that it's designed to do, without any problems. The next part to go is the safety valve. It's a Stuart safety valve and I've never liked them, but I have to use one because this is a Stuart boiler, and this is a Stuart steam tap. These are very good and very strong. And the screw thread that holds the tap into the boiler bush is made from stainless steel. The next part to go is the pressure gauge and siphon. Once again it's only loosely held to the boiler. Once I fit it for real the siphon nut will have a copper washer at each side. I'm not going to use any aluminium washers on this boiler whatsoever. Stuart have used them for many years but I just don't like them. I prefer copper ones. The next part to go already fitted with the shim washer is the check valve followed by the bottom water gauge fitting and finally the top water gauge fitting. I haven't been looking forward to this next part of the job, cleaning and polishing the boiler. This boiler is quite badly marked, some of it may have been when it was in transit from the USA, but some of the marks on this copper boiler are nothing to do with transit damage. To be honest I was tempted to stick it in my acid bath for a couple of days, but no, I'm going to work with it as it is. My personality is nothing like the personalities of some of the people who send comments into my channel. All I can say is the finish on this boiler is not perfect, but that's not a big problem, it will be fine once it's all built up and in steam. My glass of beer is always half full, or often full to the top because I don't drink very much. In a previous episode you saw me give the two cast iron mounting plates a coat of etching primer, now they have their first coat of HMG paints sat in black. And because I filled the casting on the right hand side using some JB Weld, it's looking really good and very smooth. Because I have a few 504 boilers, I have quite a lot of chimneys to choose from, but I think it's only right to use the one on the left hand side, which was the unpainted one that came with the kit. And it's a very good fit in the boiler plate, nice and tight. Some 504 boilers have a grub screw to hold the chimney in place, but this one just relies on a firm push fit. And now for the part that I'm really not looking forward to. It's into the outer part of the workshop, switch on the polishing spindle, and off we go. An important thing I'd like to mention when using a polishing spindle, it's a really good idea to have a guard behind it. If you look at this one, it has a guard behind the wheel. This guard doesn't serve much purpose when I'm polishing a thing of this size, but it's very useful for when I'm polishing smaller parts, because if the wheel catches them, it will throw the part that you're polishing probably into your face, I speak from experience. I was once polishing a small piece of copper pipe on another polishing spindle without a guard. It caught up in the polishing wheel and hit me in the face, just below my lower lip. I was wearing a pair of safety glasses at the time, which was a good thing, but it didn't help the fact that my lower lip was bleeding externally and also into my mouth. That's how hard the piece of copper hit me. You have to be very firm when you use a polishing spindle. For instance, with this boiler, I've got a really hard grip on it. If the wheel grabs the boiler, I don't want this to fall on the floor. I'm using an abrasive compound in the form of a block of wax, which has abrasive compound in the wax. But I must admit, this boiler is taking a lot of cleaning up. And the problem is that at least half of this boiler is going to be fully visible when it's built up. Yet the finish on it is a bit like it would be on a locomotive boiler. A bit rough in places, which of course doesn't matter on a locomotive boiler because you wrap the entire boiler in a sheet of metal. After using the polishing spindle for quite a lot longer than I show in the video, I brought the boiler back into the main workshop and put it on the bench, and I'm using some Brasso wadding to continue the cleaning up process. This copper end plate is not polishing up very well, but I'll do my best. A good rub with this Brasso wadding for the third time showed me that further work on the polishing spindle was definitely needed. And there is a bit of a problem with the polishing spindle, it removes quite a lot of metal. So there really is a limit to how much I can use the polishing spindle. 
In this clip is a rare occurrence I'm opening a second tin of Brasso wadding. First though I'm going to polish up the boiler using a cotton cloth and you can see how shiny it's becoming. What I'm going to do here is pull off a new piece of Brasso wadding and quite a large piece. This is in an attempt to polish up the boiler as far as I can. There's a bit of messy silver soldering around the bushes but I'm not going to do anything about that. Messing about with the fabric of the boiler is not on the agenda. A rigorous polishing is OK, but once I start to use grinders to grind off the silver solder, then it's a problem, and this has already been done on one side by the manufacturer. Much elbow grease was used in the making of this video, but I think it's going to be worth it in the end. On one side there is a scratch, I'm trying to get rid of this with some Scotch-Brite. This probably happened in transit, because all of the parts were very much rattling about inside the boxes when they arrived. At this end of the boiler though is evidence that someone has ground off some silver solder that's run down the side. In this clip you can see it very clearly, and on the right hand side I think the silver solder ran a little bit too much and would have been visible so it's been ground away. As I mentioned earlier I am not vindictive and I'm not going to make too many scathing remarks about this boiler because personally I have never made one, nor do I ever intend to. Many years ago I read a book by a man called K. N. Harris called Model Boilers and Boiler Making, and the style of the tuition in this book put me off making boilers for good. This polishing business is a very dirty procedure, I've already washed my hands once. But at least it's beginning to look shiny. I'll polish it some more before I start to assemble the boiler, then it should be OK. On screen at the moment is one of the two boiler side plates, I've only painted them on the inside with some etching primer. I will be fitting some heat insulation to the inside of these plates. And I haven't painted the outside yet, that's going to be the last job, because if I paint it and chip the paint I will have to do it again. The final paint job on these boiler plates will be before the first steam test, and that will be quite a few episodes in the future. I'm going to leave the side plates just as you see them on screen. And that's it for this video. I'd like to say, as I always do, stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.